Hey, what's up guys and gals? My name is Splattercat. We are here at the Nerd Castle at war with Vegas because they I don't know I don't know why we're at war with them to be honest I was gonna try and feed you some like bullshit reason, but I'm not sure We're fighting with them at this point in the last episode We took Kura which means we need to keep a careful eye on it just in case we need to caress its amber tresses and make sure That it remains planted firmly in the blue and not in the brown if it ends up in the brown Well, then we may have to come back and do the same thing we did before we've been fighting over Kura quite a lot since this campaign started out Oh good, people are becoming more friendly, and we've earned a little bit of money. Now one of the downsides of this war is that in the previous fight we did lose a bunch of our Huskarls to a bunch of RNG, which made me feel very, very sad. I was definitely feeling a little bit downtrodden. So in today's episode, I'm not really sure what my goal is going to be. I would love to send somebody... I would love to take out at least two castles in this episode. I've never taken out two things in one episode, I don't think. So we're going to make an attempt. We're going to go after Radagir, and we're going to go after Jerb. I'm going to ride down to Radagir first and see how it compares to Jerb. Jerb had 170, I think, as I recall. And in Radagir, we have 167. So it seems like they've both hit some kind of statistical locus or statistical arc where they hit that top point, and that's that. Let's go ahead and find some friends to help us out with this. I think we're going to go after Radagir first. So let's see, we've got Dashwall, he's standing guard, so he's got like more important thing. Is he standing guard or is he just riding around? Okay, happenstance, he wasn't standing guard, he was riding around. So let's go find him. And what we'll do, I'd love to find Ragnar, that's the big tearing point for me, is I would absolutely be enamored with finding Ragnar right now and sending him on over there with like 500 guys. I don't want to send the wrong people out first. You always want to send a big group over to wipe something out before you bring in the little groups. Otherwise, you have the distinct chance that the little groups will be run off by some big guy with like 600 units at one point or another, effectively ending your otherwise lovely siege. Maybe he's down in Proven. Let's go down to Proven. We'll have a look down there. I keep forgetting that he runs Proven with an iron fist, but only because it's in a glove. Let's see here. Vlan is in there. Rodox declared on Vagirs. That's going to give us a little bit more cover, but not quite as much as I would need. I really want them to sort of forget about us as we run on into this fight. Let's go over to there and... Okay, all of our upgrades are done. Alright, so everything's good to go. Nizar has a level of it appears, so let's go ahead and take a look at what he's got going on. What can you tell me about your skills, Nizar? We can give him a little bit more skill with Weapon Master, which is I think what I'm going to go with. I wish they leveled up like I did as they struck people in the face. I'm also going to give him strength, so we can give him a little bit better armor. We need to buy some horses too, while we're still financially safe. So let's go over to Provin and see what kind of horses we can get. Horsey merchant, and nothing with armor, so I'm definitely going to leave those behind. They're like, no, we wanted to come with you. Well, left behind you are, horse. Maybe you should get some armor and some bodding, and then we'll care about you. At least a little bit more. I mean, I'm not going to say, I'm not going to dedicate her right off a contract saying that I'm going to like you a certain amount, but what I will tell you is we will sort of like you if you have some armor. But beyond that, no promises. Let's move forward and just not fixate on it, all right? We're like, okay. Let's sell off some of these guys that we have riding around. I didn't even realize I had so many prisoners, so I should probably find myself a Ransom Broker at some point. I did find out that they could be in these upper rooms if you weren't careful, so I'm going to do my best to try and search everything before we go to no, like new cities and waste our time. I also need to buy food while I'm out and around, so this will be a good thing to pass the time while we find ourselves a Ransom Broker. Grabbing some extra foodles. Ransom Broker, and there, oh, and there's a belligerent drunk. I don't know if I should fight him right now. Four Sea Raiders and seven Taiga Bandits. Nothing worth slowing my party down about. Some prisoners are worth making yourselves a lot slower, and other ones are just kind of there to be there. I am going to fight this guy. Let me see if I can run in and give him a good shot. Ooh, one swung, or one swing, hell yeah. Well, I guess it is one swung now. I swung, and I am the one who swung. Therefore, past tense, go! Oh, I needed a horse, too. Before I get off on some other random diatribe, we've got a vol horse right there. I'm going to take that one, and we'll keep it in our equipment. Let's give that one to, I think, Borcha was the guy that we were trying to get up on a horse. I don't want any of these options. I would prefer... Let's look at your equipment. I got lost right there. I got lost for a moment. 
We'll go with a war horse, and what that means is we also need to swap him into the cavalry group. So there it is. He is now a cavalryman, which will be very, very nice for the future. I don't know who else. Oh, Matheld already has a horse. Good. But Hester, how are you doing on horsiness? Horsiness, you're not quite there yet. Like, you're sort of horsey at this point. You have a modicum of horsey, but not quite the horse experience that we would need. You are not quite as equestrian as is required for you to ride in my vanguard. Well, since I don't see any of our allies around, I have no idea what obscure hold they're all running off to to do their business nowadays, but it's definitely not anywhere near where I need them to be. Dira Jun wants me to show up for another campaign, which I am more than obliged to do. I am trying to make friends after this point. Uh, you guys had mentioned a fact that is actually very, very right, and one that I hadn't been thinking about for the future. I need to start making friends with people so that I have guys that will join my faction once we declare it. I've never played around with my own faction before. That's one of those things in this game that I've never done. I followed other factions to dominating a large proportion of the map, but I've never made my own. Which is definitely why I want to get to it in this playthrough, simply because when I do my LP playthroughs, I always try and do things that I've never done before. Try to make things a little bit more interesting. We need to find Dira June, and that's going to be in our notes menu. I was forgetting where I was going. And Dira June is somewhere. Where are you? Let's go back to the quest. It'll say in the quest text. He was close to Nudar Castle, which means that he was down... Nudar's not over there. Nudar... Where the hell is Nudar? I always forget where Nudar is, too. I should remember these things. You'd think with, like, hundreds of hours of gameplay, I would remember where these places are. But no, I don't. I never remember a single one. There it is. It's along the southern... Wait, was that him over there? Where's my party at? Huh, we're it, yeah? Well, I guess if there's only going to be two of us, I suppose we'll follow along in the campaign. I can't guarantee that anything's going to go the way we want it to. But we can try. And we will accompany him to make sure that we're matching his pace, because I hate it when you end up having to click everywhere to follow him around. I don't even know you could do that before I did this LP. Always learning something when I decide to play a game online. What are we even doing right now? We're not riding towards any of our fronts. I think the AI is like seriously confused right now. It has no clue what it's doing. So the quest is complete. And I guess in that case, we can... Let's send him off somewhere, actually. Let's send him... Anybody we can find. I want to ask you something. We will tell you to... Oh, I don't want to ask you anything. I want to give you a course of action. You should go... Let's see here. Where is Jerb? I feel as though I might be missing it. Did I say there was an enemy? These are all... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Did I say the wrong thing? Oh, I said an enemy which can be repulsed. I said the wrong thing. Okay, so that's going to explain why the option that I wanted wasn't around. I suppose we'll go with Radagir. And then after Radagir... Now, there is the possibility that Radagir will get steamrolled as a downside. Let's talk to Rudin, too. And I've got to remember that I told Dira June to do it so that he's got to be the first person to attack, just so I remember. And let's find maybe one other party to make sure that we do this properly. There we go, there's Harold. Now I understand we're probably going to lose a lot of units doing this, but I really, really, really want to capture more stuff before we end off this episode. So everybody else was headed to Radagir. So where is Radagir listed at? Radagir? Damn it. Well, I guess we only have two people headed for Radagir. This one is going to largely depend. 250. I need another sizable group that I can send over there. Because they do have a ton of archers up on the wall that are going to rapidly become a major issue for us. I thought they were going to join the siege. I have seen some very weird stuff happen before with, like, cross-faction sieges and things. Very strange circumstances where somebody will jump in on a fight that they otherwise wouldn't jump in on just because they hate the Lord. Weird things happen inside the confines of the AI in this game. Let's find ourselves another Lord over here. He's got to be around somewhere. I have no idea where all of our Lords are running off to. 
I mean, one thing I do know for sure is that our king needs to stop giving stuff to himself. Start giving stuff to people that will actually hold the line for him because he's not doing it anymore. I haven't seen Ragnar in a long, long ass time. We could presumably ask somebody and see if he's been incarcerated somewhere, but I would guess somebody would have sent us off to go find him first. Hey, here's a couple guys. Who are these? Kumipa and Volan. Let's grab Kumipa. How odd. It won't let me send anybody else over to Redagear. Damn it. Well... I don't think we can do it with what we have right now. They definitely have way too many top tier troops, so what I'm gonna do... Just come back over here and call off the siege, maybe? I think that might be my only real option. I don't want them to get steamrolled or anything while they're hanging out. Let's go ahead and upgrade our troops while we're here. We have six veterans ready to roll onto the field. A slaver chief, two Rodok sharpshooters, and two more marksmen for the line. Lazalit's ready to go, so let's get him leveled up. Lazalit appears to be a guy who has been given mostly combat stats, so we'll continue along with that. Giving him 16 strength, that'll put up Iron Flesh by 1, he's up to 61 HP, which is a very good place to be with regards to a non-player character HP. That means he's going to be able to take a lot of hits before he goes down. And now we're stuck with sort of a decision. We've got Rudin... I'm going to send everybody back to Sargoth. You can't effectively do it very well, but what you can do is you can tell him to just kind of ride off in a different direction. Did he actually attack that place? Where is the other lord? I don't even see him. Is he hiding underneath some trees? He's getting his Legolas on and just kind of hiding from the enemy. We'll see if the under siege flag goes away in just a minute. Because I'm pretty sure I told Dirige... What? Where is this guy? Is he inside the cat? No. Okay, never mind. He already rode off on his own. I had expected the Marshal to do something like similar. The Marshal is one of those people that you can't really send around because they tend to do whatever the hell they want whenever they want to. At the same time, it was worth a shot. Let's get in here. We're going to pick some fights with Vagirs before the end of the episode because I want to make sure that we at least give them some form of black eye before we give them a blank check. We give them a pass. They're being beaten up pretty badly by Rodox right now, if I had any guess. Rodox tends to be pretty powerful. So, I bet they're more or less getting their salad tossed with no dressing. If I had to wager how things were going for them. Most armies don't seem to do very well versus Rodox. I just, they seem to be very, very powerful after their last couple patches worth of changes. Maybe they're fighting down in Rodox territory. I might be able to garner myself a little bit of support by helping some of the Rodox lords down here while they ride around. What is he doing? 116? Somebody over here. Let me see if I can cut him off from Revod and then run him down. I don't know who it is, but I saw somebody. No? I guess not. God, that text is so obnoxious. I want it to go away. Please make it stop. Still getting paid, which is always a good thing. Suppose I could hit up Uxkal and find a couple more horses, maybe. All I have is non-armored horses. I'm beginning to feel a little bit bereft. I'm feeling sad. I'm not feeling as though life is good right now because I can't get the horses I need. I can, however, get the food I need, which is always nice. So at least we'll be fed if we can't have riding going on. I'm going to run him down, I think. We're hiding in a forest, and I think we can get him before he can get anywhere safe. Let's try and keep ourselves from getting bulldozed by any kings or anything while we're around here. Ah, we're going to go help Count Iriah. We don't really need to help him because he's already gotten his foe completely and totally overwhelmed. But we'll ride out on this one just to say we did because we'll get some reputation points. And when you're looking out for friends, those reputation points tend to cash in pretty quickly. I think we've got to get people up to like 15 or so before they're friendly with us. At which point, we have a much better chance at talking them into our side. Give him the blade across the bow. Or the brow. He doesn't have a bow, he's a human being! Unless he's like a robot with ship parts attached to him, and then he might have a bow. He gets really, really lucky. One day when he earns it, he will be made into a ship robot man, and his bow will be gleaming, and it will be the finest bow in all of the land.
That guy's giving me a very unsubtle juking, which I don't like to be juked. If you covered in the last episode, people in Calradia become very frustrated when you juke them. It's part of our... Well, I would suppose it's part of what ties into what makes you you. Your ability to not be juked. I mean, it really affects your self-confidence. If you get juked enough times, you're pretty much obligated in the world of Calradia to just run off into the sunset and live as a hermit by yourself off in some hut. Now then, we've gotten ourselves up to six. Oh no, Iraya, we've actually undone some damage from previous exploits, it looks like. There we are, not to say that we've exploited the game, but to say that we have had exploits in the past. Adventurous exploits, which have led to kind of various terrible things happening to everyone that isn't us. Although terrible things happen, yeah, it looks like their entire army's been wiped out, which explains why we haven't seen them around anywhere. We've got a 28-man army that's trying to ride out hard on us by Marmoon. And he, unfortunately, got himself cut off from his king, so he's about to get bowled over. I don't think I'm going to set up any sort of formation or anything. We've got such overwhelming numbers that I don't see us... Oh, I, we need more cavalry. I need to spend a little bit of time. My cavalry is looking a tad thin right now. It's not that I haven't been feeding them, it's that we just don't have the numerical advantage that I feel like we need, so... Cavalry charges in this game tend to only be really effective if you can run your cavalry down with like 15 to 20 men at the bare minimum. And if they all spawn in in different waves, then you're completely and totally boned because your cavalry aren't going to be useful at all. I think they're holding their position anyways, so this little ride-out tactic that we're being forced to do is going to be how the whole thing plays out either way. Sometimes the AI decides to turtle and just gives you absolutely no choice in the matter. It looks like he does have a lot of marksmen, which is kind of an interesting group assemblage, considering how few units he has. I don't know if he picked those up from a castle recently or, mer or where he may have acquired them from, but it appears as though his group has at least some veterancy, which can be a little bit threatening. We lost a mercenary cavalry there, and we're being hit by arrows in our backside, and also Vulges at our front. It's one of those days, unfortunately. We have like one HP left. I'm going to skim along the sides, and I should probably refrain from any further cavalry antics. There we are, gentlemen. It appears as though my reinforcements have arrived, which puts me in a loverly situation to murder up some enemies. I am going to ride towards the back, though, now. I don't want to get myself killed off by a random arrow. One of those happenstance killings that I just cannot abide by. Losing Huskarls somehow. I have no idea how we're losing Huskarls to Marksmen because Marksmen use normal arrows, and in general, when you eat a normal arrow from a Marksman, it doesn't appear to do much damage, but I guess... I, I do have the difficulty turned up, so that's one thing I will say is that everybody's taking full damage, so there is the possibility that maybe I'm used to playing on normal, and because I have everything ramped up so high, I'm just not used to the damage amounts, but that really seems odd that he would be killed by a normal arrow weapon. Doesn't tend to be one of those things that I fear when I have a big force of Huskarls. I'm going to take his knight and everything else, treat it like a game of chess, pocket that knight, and then be on our way. We did a pretty good job there. I mean, there was no way for us not to do a good job. The enemy was so vastly outnumbered, but in the same state, every enemy that we wiped out is another one that we don't have to face in the future. 31 mountain bandits over there, which might be an interesting conflict to jump on into. Wow, they have just been breeding like crazy over in this vicinity. Let's run down this group of 54, because I think it'll be a good way to spend my time. And it's 100 versus 105. Let's see how this goes. This is one of the biggest bandit groups that I've ever fought outside of Floris. I'm going to have everybody follow me, and they're going to have to come to me at this point, because they have pretty good numbers. Oop, I pushed the wrong button. So now we've got the cavalry following us. Everybody's in line where I'd like them to be. I'm going to keep everybody spread out for a little bit in the hopes that they don't eat arrow fire because from what I recall, mountain bandits are the guys to go to when you need a little bit of arrow fire sent on down the line. We have somebody dismounting randomly. Why they did that, I don't know. I never gave the order to dismount, nor will I ever, unless it's really, really convenient to do so. And they're just now cresting the hill, so there they are. I might as well take some pot shots too. I don't see any reason not to. I need to be a little bit higher. I'm having a tiny bit of trouble tracking my arrow. It's getting too small on the screen for me to see it. But right about there should definitely get somebody. They are in a pretty big blob. You can already see the casualties starting to mount up. I think I'm still firing short, maybe. 
Which, as a short person, if anybody else had made that joke, I'm like, hey, you trying to make a short go right now? I'm not that short. Why you make a short joke about me? I'm not picked on you. But since it's me making the joke, it's kind of hard to be offended at your own joke, I guess. God. Just the slaughter that's occurring. How could I have missed this many arrows? I'm just awful at this. And it's weird, because some days I do such a great job at just nailing headshot after headshot. This does not appear to be one of those days, though. I've wasted a lot of arrows to the point of embarrassing myself. I'm going to allow my archers just to have a heyday on this one, because it appears as though this is a situation in which they're being best utilized. They are absolutely just wiping out the enemy right now. I will let the infantry have a little bit of fun, but we're going to have people regroup in just a moment, because they are going to catch maybe two runs of reinforcement. Probably just one, but maybe two depending on the tactical advantage. That guy's running away from the battlefield, sporting some pretty hefty head bandages. It's like that thing, if you ever watch old cartoons, whenever somebody has a toothache, they wrap a big old cloth around their head for some reason. I don't really know what that accomplishes. I'd say just pull the tooth and be done with it, but, you know, maybe wrapping a big cloth around your head helps. It seems like it would impede eating, though, unless you just take it off whenever you eat. But then again, I'm lazy, so... A lot of work to do something somewhat mundane. Is that all a hundred of them, or are we done here? I don't think we're done here. Let's go ahead and tell our infantry to fall back that way, and we'll wait for them to crest the hill one more time. Let our archers do the same thing. Rinse and repeat is the name of the game here. Looks like we struck a pretty foul blow against them. Seriously, the blow was incredibly smelly. It was... It's been weeks since... <laughs> it's been weeks since that blow was washed properly. And when it did wash the last time, it just sort of did that thing where it rolls around in the bathtub for a minute, didn't use any soap. That blow was nasty, and always has been and always will be, from what I can tell. Just wasn't instilled with good sense by his parents. God. Who parents a blow? At this point, somebody in the comments will be like, Actually, a blow is a type of antelope from southern South Africa. And I'll be like, oh. <laughs> well, then I guess other blows parent blows. <laughs> God. That hillside is definitely accumulating some human fertilizer at this point. Let's go ahead and let the infantry off the leash. They're close enough to where I don't want to give them the opportunity to throw javelins. We have heavy armored unit. Ooh, hit with a hammer right in the head as he fell down. Oh, we got two reinforcements, so there it is. The second wave is indeed incoming. I was wondering if we would get a second wave, and it looks like we indeed shall. These big bandit battles, if you've ever played Floris, Floris is a mod for the game, and once you get far enough, there's actually unique lords of the bandits that spawn that you can fight with, and the unique lords have like hundreds of each bandit type, so let's say you're fighting the lord of the sea bandits or the sea raiders, you could easily find yourself going one versus like 600 to 800 sea raiders, and it gets pretty rowdy, even if you have 100 men who are top tier, it can, it's just the attrition, like the sheer amount of javelins and things that end up getting thrown at you at the end, like, in every skirmish, you're guaranteed that at least one person's going to catch a javelin. And when you have so many different battles with so many people throwing so many different javelins, eventually the statistical chance just kind of rolls over on you. But they're fun battles nonetheless, and when you win them, you get Masterwork Weaponry that's really nice. Pretty sweet little addition that they added to the game. Mountain Blade is one of those unique series where I love this series, and I'm not sure if I'll ever do another Mountain Blade until Bannerlord comes out, just because this series is tiring to me. Like, I actually have to come up with things to talk about to fill all the blank space. Otherwise, it would just kind of be me sitting here being like, all right, well, these units are shooting. Those units are getting hit. Isn't that great? And I guess, I guess if that's the kind of LP that some people are into, then I guess that's that, but... I don't know. I get bored in that case, so I prefer to talk about random things. Talk about, you know, life. Stuff happening. Humorous things I observe. But in any case, I don't know if I'll ever have the energy to do another Mountain Blade again. This is a lot of episodes. I think this is more episodes than any series I have ever done in the history of the channel. I think if you combined all of the Towns episodes, I might have done 60. But as it stands right now, I actually don't think I ever got to that extent with any other series where it was like 60 concurrent episodes that all linked to one another. I had a couple different campaigns for Towns, and that's why it was so long-winded. That was back in the day when I first started out, and I'm sure there are those among you who started out with me here using Towns and Dungeons of Dreadmore back in the day when I was showing you how terrible I was at that game. And if I go really far back, there may be somebody that witnessed War Z when I put that up as my first video one night. Just on a whim, and who would have known one year later we would have almost 20,000 people at the channel like, what? It's a very strange thing that I just did that randomly one night. Like, there was no planning that went into it whatsoever. I was like, you know what? I'm going to make an LP tonight, and I just, I did. I made an LP, and I uploaded it, and 
Never thought that it would ever amount to anything, and indeed it did, which is... It's strange. Because when you start, like, a hobby, people are always telling you, Oh, that's stupid. That's never gonna do anything. And then once it actually does, they switch phases on you, and then they're just like, Oh, man, that's so great! Alright, well, whatever, you know. It's all good. I suppose. People are people. Let's sell off the remainder of all this stuff. There it is. We'll buy up all their cheese and all of their fish because we could use a very variable inventory when it comes to food at this point. And I think I'm going to break the episode off here. I, I recorded the last two or three episodes like all in one big streak. And I'm feeling a tad tired right now. And whenever I feel this way, I feel like it's probably a good idea to break it off. You don't want to burn yourself out and be like, Nyah, I hate Mountain Blade Warband. I never want to play it again. And so in order to keep myself out of that mindset, I'm going to let you guys go. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here in the Nerdcastle for another episode of Mountain Blade Warband. It's been a lot of fun, and I look forward to all of the future episodes that we will be cutting together. Take care out there, everybody, and hi-do.